I just finished Galaxy's Outlaws, which is book two of Galaxy's Edge. And honestly, I'm not sure I've fully digested it. I'm not entirely sure I have a good opinion on it. But I said on Monday when I reviewed Legionnaire that you should subscribe uh, because I'd be reviewing book two to give a updated opinion on the ending. And I'm going to go to book three. I'm not sure when. I do really need to read a bunch of other stuff. But I'm going to go to book three almost out of morbid curiosity because this series is desperately flailing around to find its footing. Uh, I get the impression that they didn't exactly know what was going to get them the biggest initial audience to snowball from there, which I'm sympathetic to. Because I said in my review of Legionnaire that it's a simple plot, and I actually just gave them a pass on that, or more accurately, I said it's fine to start a series like that. Um, perhaps I should kind of explain that a bit. Uh, when someone is testing out a new writer to them, they're going to be suspicious. They're going to have a really high threshold for deciding it's crap. Like they'll be really sensitive to saying, oh, this is bad. Uh, in, a, in a way that more successful authors don't have to deal with. And that's why more successful authors can do more complicated plots with more characters and juggle more things. It's not, it's, I don't think it's entirely just because they're literally better at storytelling. I think it's actually just that the audience gives them the credibility. Um, which is why it makes sense to me that you start a series with a basic and familiar plot. You fill the, the story with recognizable stereotypical characters. And then you bring the reader into the series and start giving them your own personal flair. Now, book two, which I've been told, uh, was actually written before Legionnaire. Legionnaire was actually appended to the front of the series try and tie things together better because it will probably they came they probably came to that same conclusion they needed to do that because book two is very much here's our personal flair on we're going to do star wars better than disney this is undeniably a reaction to the crap that is the the sequel trilogy of star wars uh very obviously it is, there are Han Solo, Chewbacca dynamics just basically copy-pasted. Um, and that's for, like, a lot of the stories. Just, like, indulging the smarmy smuggler, free-range pirate kind of attitude and freedom that uh, Keel has. Which, by the way, audiobook, I'm going to screw up names. I apologize. I did read it. Um, and... A lot of it is, you know, you got your Space Marines, uh, but actually the named ones have these super old old school, they don't make them like they used to make them power armor, and they're just better than everyone, because because don't you know the Repub is going downhill, even though the, the epilogue Legionnaire says that the Repub was always crap. Uh, I, I gotta remember to come back to the things were better in the past trope, for, even though there's really no explanation given for why things were better except just like generic budget cuts without ever getting a technological improvement so the the plot to galaxy's outlaws is actually relatively complicated but it's not like unreasonably complicated it's just like not like it, it was worth noting in legionnaire how simple it was uh and in this one it's kind of it has a lot of moving parts because a lot of stuff gets set up as driving characters and questions that get answered at like the very end of the story, uh, which they actually do well. They don't. I don't think they screwed up any setups to payoffs or anything. Um, everything gets introduced in time. The, the The action sequences are fine. It's just that it severely relies on a borderline. Plot, like the, the plot armor is so thick on the named characters that you can feel the health bars barely chunking away because uh, Tyrus Rex, uh, who is just the, the super duper mega super soldier, unbeatable legionnaire from the past that uh, used to train all the other legionnaires and he's just that good where he's been a bounty hunter for longer than he can remember because he's that old and he's still kicking ass. I mean, he does good fight sequences, but he literally just gets shot constantly. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I've got dissipating armor. 
Simple as. Dissipating armor, bro. It's Legionnaire armor. They don't make it like they used to. This is I'm cybernetically enhanced. They don't make it like they used to. I can punch through current Legionnaire armor. I got really, really tired of that as it went on. Uh, but the the character tension of the story was actually pretty good. I personally have kind of a hang up because it relies on like the basically the driving character of the plot is actually like a, a young girl trying to get uh, revenge for her father's murder. And there's there isn't an explanation of why did her father get murdered until at the very end. And it's it's a reasonable answer, actually. You, you you're going to be happy getting it. Uh, and but the, the answer doesn't really matter to the girl and her existence is basically just pulling in these major actors that have their own capacity for violence and monetary motivations and all that, um, which is totally fine for a plot to have one character drive it, even if they're not like the necessarily the main character of it. Tyrus Rex has to definitely be considered the main character, and the deuterotagonist, the, the secondary protagonist, whatever the correct term is, of Keel is set up to basically carry the story forward because he's the one with growth. You know, he's not the the grizzled old uh, you know bastard from back in the past who's undefeatable. He's the guy with character flaws that can uh, ha has room to show his humanity and grow into a hero. You know, it's why. Uh, the old Jedi's get killed off in Star Wars, and Han uh, takes their place essentially alongside Luke, and you know it's hero's journey type stuff. But Tyrus Rex is all about uh, why? Why have I been out on the edge of the galaxy fighting so long that I don't even remember what's going on anymore? I'm, I'm haunted by my past, all the people I've killed. What's been? All, what has it all been about? And at the very end, you basically get introduced to the Sith. I dare you to read this book and say they're not the Sith. Literally, it's straight up psychic telekinesis powers as he's walking around in a black robe there. You can't see his face, flanked by faceless soldiers who do whatever he says, and he, oh, let me just force choke you. Yeah, no, it's Darth Vader. It's like shamelessly Darth Vader. But they want to set up a big, giant, uh, galaxy spanning uh, military sci fi epic to pull you into this series going forward. Maybe that's clumsy. Maybe I don't like the fact that they're just shamelessly going for your heartstrings on, oh, don't you care about this little girl who wants to get who wants to get revenge for her daddy who was murdered? And by the way, instead of a teddy bear, she has a 3,000 pound killing machine ro you know, uh, warbot who acts like her butler. Isn't that cute? Ah. Maybe maybe I'm the weird one for not liking that. I I think that's going too low on the heartstrings personally uh and as it turns out the, the story between legionnaire and galaxy's edge is actually connected in ways i don't want to spoil because i i guess i have to reduce the amount i spoil in my when, especially when i'm saying that yes i liked it go you should probably go check it out especially because you can get it on audible as a combo deal with legionnaire for i think still free but it was just like it just so wanted to be Star Wars, man, and it did not now for me to rant about, oh, it was better in the past. There was no real reason given for why technology would get worse, why there why there would just be continuous budget cuts. I don't understand what that's being based on. Cause I know like engineering companies in the private sector will continually make cheaper and cheaper crap as long as it functionally still does the same thing so like oh you know we're equipping legionnaires with armor that can only stop small arms fire instead of a ship to ship missile because well we're not expecting them to get shot by ship to ship missiles maybe but like that's not how the corruption of the military industrial complex works and not to mention at the time scales implied between the the founding of the legionnaires when Tyrus Rex became, Ty you know, the T-Rex of the Lieges, and when this story takes place, there's, I, I can't find a logical reason that all technology would have universally degraded like this. 
it's literally just implied that well it's budget cuts it's political appointees in the in the house of reason that don't know what they're doing but even if they are cutting cutting costs like you're going to have breakthroughs you're going to have future soldier projects you're you're going to have a better explanation for why there are ship ais but not really like commercial ais i I don't i don't follow that one um but like i guess you just accept that yeah it's the trope that it was better back in the day you know it's the it's the fantasy golden age of stuff was better in the past just accept it because that lets us have named characters that are super special in combat uh, and just mow down these mass-produced uh, wastes of blaster fire, basically. I guess that's fine. Maybe it'll get better. I'm hoping it gets better as the series goes on. Uh, because apparently there is psychic mind reading and fate foretelling and uh, non-Euclidean space and deep space monsters of madness. And, like they, they, They're dumping all the science fantasy tropes into this, apparently. And honestly, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that they're bringing in the Force. Because Legionnaire didn't hint at that. I thought I was getting straight up, you know boot stomping we're sending in the space marines to go save the day and that is not galaxy outlaws so i'm told that book three connects the dots between the two of them and maybe on the the grand course of authorial improvement i i will say yeah book three is great right now i can just say yeah i enjoyed it was it was I disappointed though? Yeah, kind of. It, it is such a different tone and style from Legionnaire that I kind of feel lied to in being told that this is a series. It's too different. Now maybe it's because Legionnaire came in was written after to try and correct and match what was in the future. Maybe it's Galaxy Outlaws is the outlier. Stick around, drop us a subscribe, uh, and we can go on this journey of discovery together because it's still better than Star Wars. What do you want me to say? Fortunately, my next book is a nonfiction piece about economics. That's going to be great. I will try to make an interesting video out of that someday. And you should subscribe, hit the like button, and, uh, you know, check out my stuff as well. You know, it supports the channel. The channel is, is sponsored by me. I, I am in the pursuit of quality here. Uh, this is my uh, latest book, and you can find the details in the link in the description. See you next time.